Hey, what is up guys? It's Arnik and welcome to this week's video. All the way back in April last year, I made a video about trace paths and it's actually one of my better performing videos. However, last week there came up a question of uh, osfan25, osfan, osfan, not sure, let's go with osfan25. <laughs> Anyways, he had the question, if I have multiple shape layers, but I want to follow along that path, think of ants marching along, would I have to create separate nulls for each one or could it be done with a single null? Well, that's a quite good question and I'm glad to follow up on that one. Um, so today we are talking delay expressions. Actually, this is a topic I've been looking into for quite a while now and so I thought might as well put this one out first. Which also means that this video build is building upon my video on trace paths. So if you haven't seen that one, go check it out up here. But please leave this tab open in the meantime, because, you know, YouTube retention rate and all. <laughs> but anyways, without any further ado, let's get it on. So here we are, just where we left off in my previous video on trace paths. To keep everything sorted properly, let me just duplicate the initial composition with Ctrl and Command D and rename it accordingly. Delay expression, what is today's date? February 9th, okay, and open it up. Let's see what we got here. Uh, did I actually do it like this? You can't see shit. Now that's better. Okay, so we have this ball following the line along its path. Today's goal is to have multiple objects follow the same movement, but with a small delay in between them. However, we do not want to duplicate the null and offset the keyframing. That is a whole lot of work and just is not as elegant. Instead, we are going to stick to this one null down here, just like OSFAN25 suggested. At the moment, the circle is simply parented to the null, which is good for what we wanted to achieve back then, but we actually don't have any means to alter the timing with parental links. So let's disable the parenting. Scrubbing through the timeline, we see that our circle doesn't move at all, which was to be expected, as this layer has no animations whatsoever. Now open up all the null's expressions by hitting E on your keyboard twice. We can see that our object was probably just following the null's position to move. Which means that we just have to pick with the circle's position and drop it directly onto the null's position. Now hit enter and the circle snaps back into position and follows the path again. The big difference being that the animation is now happening within the expression window, which we know we can change in almost any way we like. Let's go into the position expression. Behind all of this auto-generated stuff, simply add dot value at time. This expression cannot stay on its own. It always needs a value inside the brackets. Adding the digit one will set the layer's position to wherever null has been at the one second mark. This tells us that we have to adjust this value to base on time. Now it is moving together with the line again. So back at the beginning we are. Actually, let me stretch the animation, it feels really fast at the moment. Now, to add a delay with which the circle is supposed to follow, let's create a variable. I will call it delay for a better traceability of this tutorial. And delay equals time minus, and now we want each element to have their own delay of following. If we have a couple of identical elements, which is the one thing that always changes from one layer to another? The index, right? So let's just subtract index from time. And finally, don't forget to put our new variable into the brackets down here. Now that is already getting closer to what we are trying to achieve. Let's duplicate our circle a bunch of times. And actually we already got multiple elements following one another with only this one null. So, mission accomplished? Well, if this is all you need, you're good to go. However, there's one small issue with this method. The distance is always the same between them, which does not feel natural. 
So let's try to change things up a little with a random number for each layer. Go into the initial circle expression and above our delay variable, we are going to add another line. Let's call this new variable int delay for individual delay. And that equals random. And we want this random number to lie somewhere between zero and one with zero being directly on top of the line and one being maximum one second behind the line. And this whole thing we're gonna subtract from the time in the line below. So each single element gets an individual random number between zero and one in order to follow differently. But now we run into another issue. This random number is generated on every single frame, resulting in our circle jumping around uncontrollably. So here's another great tip when working with random numbers in After Effects expressions. Directly above the random line, add the following. Seed random, open brackets, index, comma, timeless equals false. This basically is identical to what we had just before adding this line of code. And nothing has changed. So what's the point of doing this? The key lies in this value. If we now change timeless false into true, this random number will stay the same throughout the composition, which means the individual delay is random and stays the same the whole time. All you gotta do now is to simply right click the position property, copy expression only and paste it onto the other layers. Let's change a few colors so we can actually see what is going on here. And with that, we finally achieved what we set out to do. But here is one more really quick tip to make this whole thing a little more alive. Following the idea of marching ants, it would be fairly unsafe to assume that every ant is moving at the exact same speed, right? So with a very simple addition to the existing code, we can speed up and slow down each individual element. So let's add a new variable like time stretch equals another random number. So make sure this one lies somewhere underneath the seed random line. And let's say this number should be somewhere between one and 1.5. Of course, you can choose any numbers you like. I'm going with a minimum of one here because anything below that would result in the circle being faster than the line itself. So with this new variable, we're gonna divide time by the variable time stretch. And now let's see what we've done here. Well, and there you have it. Just a couple of tips and tricks that should cover everything you need to achieve whatever you're going for in your project. I hope this was helpful and if anything still is unclear, don't forget to drop it in the comments and then we'll get back to you. Once more, if you want to see how Trace Paths works in the first place, go check out this video. And for all of my other videos, go check out the Tutorial Tuesday playlist on this side. If you like this video, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe if you aren't already, and ring that bell to step-by-step step up your filmmaking and animation game with every video. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!